Joining me now is Michael J. Fox. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. When you did the campaign ad for Claire McCaskill, I've interviewed you on a number of occasions, but tell us what you were experiencing that day and what we were seeing as a result. Well, on any given day, I have a, a, diff a thousand different things that I can feel, and I usually feel, I go through a million cycles over the course of a day. Um, for example, right now, this is a dearth of medication. Um, not by design, I just take it and it kicks in when it kicks in. Sometimes it kicks in too hard and then you get what's called dyskinesias, which is that rocking motion. Rush Limbaugh suggested that you had failed to take your medication intentionally. So when you did that ad, you'd be more symptomatic and therefore more sympathetic. And the irony of it is that I, that I was too medicated and, and was dyskinesic. Because the thing about, the thing about being... Uh, being symptomatic is it's not comfortable. It doesn't, nobody wants to be symptomatic. It's like wanting to hit yourself with a hammer. You know, you want at all times to be as, as comfortable as you can be. And at this point now, if I didn't take medication, I wouldn't be able to speak. I, I, I'd have a mask face. I wouldn't be able to speak and I'd, and I'd lock up and freeze and wouldn't be able to move. So there's no time that I'm not medicated. And when you saw Rush Limbaugh pretty much imitating you, on his radio show. I know that played in I didn't see it. On many media outlets. You haven't I, seen it? No, I heard about it, but you know, it's one of those things I heard about it. I just kinda of, my first thought was, no. He, you know, are you kidding me? And then I thought, well, you know, I knew there'd be a swift reaction from some quarters. Um, and you know the thing that's and I knew there'd be that celebrity tag, which always kills me because the people who throw that celebrity tag around are the themselves such huge celebrities and incredibly well-paid celebrities and, and, you know, really have no more God-given right to have the platform than I do or any American does. We all have a right to speak up and say what we think is right. And we all have a right to fight for the things that we believe in. And I believe that science should move forward in this country. Science is a big part of the American story. And we need to start writing a new chapter. I called Rush Limbaugh and he told me, I believe Democrats have a long history of using victims of various things as political spokespeople because they believe they are untouchable, infallible. They are immune from criticism. He went on to say, Michael J. Fox is stumping for Democrats in the political arena and is therefore open to analysis and criticism as we all are. Well, first thing, uh, you know, he used the word victim. And in another occasion, I heard he use the word pitiable. And understand, nobody in, in, in this position wants pity. We don't want pity. I could give a damn about Rush Limbaugh's pity or anyone else's pity. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a victim. I'm someone who's in this situation. I think I'm in this situation along with millions of other Americans, whether it's, like I said, for Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or, or ALS or diabetes or spinal cord injury or what have you. And we have a right, if there's answers out there, to pursue those answers with the full support of our politicians. And, and so I don't need anyone's permission to do that. What about research on adult stem cells? That's fantastic. What about research on stem cells that have been culled from embryos and may be able to be produced synthetically? In other words, this is such a political hot potato, as you well know. But, but, the, but the point of it is that the cells that, that we're not using, that are being wasted, hundreds of thousands of cells, that are, that are left over from in vitro fertilization are being thrown away, are being wasted. They're not going to become life. They're not going to become life. They're being thrown away. So in that sense, people say protecting the unborn, but they're, they're going to be destroyed anyway. So let's use those cells to protect the unborn that are going to be born with diabetes. They're going to be born with pre genetic predisposition to Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or, or, or are going to be injured as children and have spinal cord injury. I mean, we have, that's, a, that's the pro-life position, because those cells are going to be wasted. That's what people need to understand, is that, is that, you know, where was the outcry when in vitro fertilization was started 20 years ago? Because it's been going on for 20 years. Hundreds and thousands of these cells have been destroyed every year. Let me ask you this. Is this tough for you to do? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. But, uh, you know, it's, it's hard on my wife, too. She's taking one for the team. She's got the, the four kids at home, and and getting them off to school every day and all that, so. But as your symptoms become more severe and the medication becomes less efficacious as the years go by, mm. how tough is this for you 
to sit here and talk to me like this? Honestly, this is, uh, I mean, I really feel this, that you get in your life very few chances to make a difference. And, and I'm really, uh, if this is the circumstances that make that possible, I, like I said, I'm grateful for it. it you know, it, when I'm in my life with my kids and hanging out, I'm, uh, it's easier. There's not, I mean, stress is really uh, an exacerbating factor. Um, but having said that, um, yeah, it's not pretty. It's not pretty when, when, when it gets bad. And, and, you know, I've learned to throw vanity out the window. I mean, I had enough years of people thinking I was pretty and teenage girls hanging my picture on the wall. I'm, I'm over that now. So, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's tough to get shots. It's tough to, it's tough to, to, to do some things. But like I said, you know, the chance that, to just get people for, for two minutes to go, well, this is big. This is like not a, it's not a wedge issue. This is not a thing. This is like, this is really about who we are as a country and how we feel about our people. And, and about the majority, uh, respecting the minority, but moving forward with what they need and what they want. I want to make that point too that um, that people that, that are against stem cell research, embryonic or otherwise, whatever, I couldn't respect them more. I, I, if they prayed on it and they thought about it and they can't get their head around it or their heart around it, then great. I mean, fantastic. I admire them and I respect them. All I say to them respectfully is, if there's a majority that also prayfully and thoughtfully and emotionally and, and, and intellectually and, and, and in every other way weighed this and came on the other side and said, no, I think it's the right thing to do to, to, to very carefully tread these waters to save these lives, then you have to respect that too. And don't resort to name calling or inflammatory language or, or mocking or whatever you need to do. Just have a discussion about it. And we'll see what happens.